geothermal is not the most cost-effective way for most houses to heat or cool. Usually the most cost-effective way is an air source heat pump. Sometimes geothermal is more cost-effective when you have a lot of heat that you need over the year. So we're going to dig into when you would want to use geothermal and when you would want to use an air source heat pump. When you look at an off-grid system, there are advantages to an air source heat pump and a geothermal heat pump over something like propane or natural gas. And the main advantages are reliability if you ever had an interruption of gas. And so you can think about it this way. If you want an off-grid house that is the most amazing, incredible off-grid house that can run on its own without any intervention until you have some major component failure, like a water well goes out or like an inverter goes out, then you want a system that runs on either an air source heat pump or a geothermal heat pump because that means you can run for five to 10 years without any interventive maintenance, without having to refuel your gas. That is ideal from an off-grid house perspective. Much, much, much later. Geothermal is when you circulate water or air down into the ground or refrigerant and it picks up heat while it's down there or it deposits heat while it's down there and comes back up. And so normally with heat pumps, you have an air source heat pump. It transfers heat from inside the house to the air with the refrigeration cycle. The refrigeration cycle compresses, pulls heat out of the house, and then expands and releases heat outside. That's an air source heat pump. Uh, the other version of that is a geothermal heat pump where it exchanges with the ground. Why do people use geothermal? The reason that people use geothermal heat pumps is because they're more efficient than air source heat pumps. So the reason people use them is they're the cheapest way to produce heat on earth if you look at the run cost. The reason people don't use them is they're really expensive to put in. They're usually twenty to thirty thousand dollars more than an air source heat pump. Like a a good variable speed mini split will be thirty five hundred a ton. A good variable speed geothermal system could be seven to eight thousand a ton, and even a single stage geothermal system is going to run you sixty five hundred a ton. And so the premium is that upfront cost. Now a basic air source heat pump, like most people use single stage, is gonna run about 15 to 2,000 a ton. So that's the problem with geothermal. The reason very, very few people do it is it's very expensive up front. So here's the crazy thing about geothermal. Most HVAC systems, a central heat pump, we've done so many of them as a nation, as a building industry, we kind of do the same thing on all of them, right? It's a three ton, four ton, five ton heat pump. It heats and cools. You've got flexible ductwork in the attic. You've got a central fan. There's very few components. It's not a lot of variation house to house. Vast majority of houses being built today are either that central heat pump or a dual fuel where it's a central air conditioner so it doesn't heat, it just cools, and natural gas. But this is where it gets crazy. There's not an established best practice. There, there are some best practices, but every manufacturer kind of has different things that they do. And because of that, there's a lot of wrong ways to do geothermal. You can mess up geothermal really easily and there's not the expertise in the HVAC contractor industry, there's not the expertise in the general contractor industry to know what a good geothermal system is. So if geothermal is more expensive and it doesn't make sense financially, meaning the efficiency you gain doesn't pay for itself over the life of the system, which is the case in most situations. Why do I still love it? Because I do, I love geothermal systems. We've built several of them. Um, we try as hard as we can to do geothermal on every project we can, especially for off-grid houses. Well, the reason is, is the math actually does make sense for some off-grid houses. And so I'm gonna show you what that math looks like. All right, this chart that you're looking at is the monthly usage comparison of a geothermal system, single stage central heat pump, and a variable speed central heat pump. These are for a three and a half ton system in Winslow, Arizona, which is climate zone three and about the middle, maybe a little bit on the colder side for climate zone three, but pretty close. And you can see that the <clears throat> geothermal system is, is using about 40 to 45% less energy than the single stage or the variable speed systems. Now, obviously gas would do better than geothermal and would be cheaper, 
but you have that long-term cost of gas. And so natural gas, yeah, that's a really good idea. Propane, maybe not. It could be really expensive to heat a house like this on propane, even in a relatively warm climate zone three. We're gonna look at what a standard home, um, this is actually pulled from an example of a house that we just built. And we're gonna do a breakdown of where they're using power in this house. And you, what you'll see is geothermal doesn't really make sense on small houses. And it doesn't really make sense compared to an air source heat pump that's high efficiency, like a good uh, mini split. But where geothermal does win, where it does get points, um, where we like to use it is for off-grid homes and heating in the winter on electricity. Geothermal helps with that because it's the highest efficiency source of heat that's based on electricity. So if you want to do no gas, no propane, which a lot of people want, you can do that with geothermal for cheaper than a mini split, for cheaper than a central heat pump system if you're building an off-grid house. It's just to you as a customer, what makes the most sense. But there is a size range, usually about a five ton heat pump, where geothermal does make more economic sense than a mini split or a central heat pump system. And this is true in climate zone four and above. Uh, climate zone three and below it, it is not true because the Basically, your, your temperatures are very rarely below freezing. Okay, this chart you're looking at, I used Claude to make, which is an AI tool. But basically, it shows a four and a half thermal heat pump at the top. It assumes that the geothermal stays four and a half. In reality, it would go up and down above four and a half, below four and a half, but it would be stable. And it wouldn't be related to the outside air temperature. If you look at the single stage and variable speed down below, they vary their efficiency with the outside air temperature. So this is during a cold week in Winslow, Arizona, which is climate zone three. So this data gets a lot more aggressive, meaning the variable speed and single stage go down in efficiency more aggressively as the temperatures get colder. So if you're climate zone four or five or six instead of climate zone three, this could be a dramatically bigger difference. But those units, <clears throat> even though they have a seasonal coefficient of performance of four or five, on the cold weeks, which is what matters for an off-grid system, they don't perform well. And the geothermal system does perform very well and can even perform higher than four and a half under some circumstances, even in climate zone four, five, and six. So this is one of the reasons we really like geothermal. This specific example is pulled from a three and a half ton system. And that is the next image we pulled that up. Okay, and here the second chart, summary of the costs. If you had a geothermal system, based on the load we were just talking about, and this is assuming you're only powering the heat load for that three and a half ton house in Winslow, Arizona, 17.4 kilowatt of solar. This is assuming you've got a 412 roof straight south facing versus 33 kilowatt with the air source heat pump, the central system comparatively, assuming that your solar panel cost is $1.50 a watt, which doesn't include the inverter because all we're increasing is solar panels, racking, and labor to install about $1.50 a watt there. Same thing, how much more battery storage capacity do you need? We're assuming a 24 hour period. A lot of our customers actually like to push that up to 30 or 36 hours to have more battery before they kick over to generator. So this is a pretty conservative number, but basically you're 26,000 for batteries on that same house versus 49,000 on the air source heat pump system. So the total system savings is 46 grand. As you know, geothermal, 20 to 25 grand extra. This is a pretty good deal. Air source heat pumps have gotten way better in the last 10 years and geothermal systems really haven't. A lot of the time, geothermal systems with the de-superheater option, which allowed it to also heat your domestic hot water, makes a big difference. But with the advent of heat pump, air source hot water tanks, like the Ream hybrid performance models, they just don't make sense anymore. So what we have to do is rethink how geothermal works. And we've been working through that. Dandelion Energy has been doing some things like that. Um, many companies in Europe, like Niobe and EcoForest, um, they have some really innovative approaches to geothermal that we're really excited about because they work really well for off-grid homes. Because nothing is better at heating a home off-grid in the winter on electricity than geothermal. I think everybody at least my client base, they want to have a fully electric, fully self-sustainable house. A lot of them still want gas stoves, gas fireplaces, just for the look and feel. 
but they don't want to be reliant on gas as a heat source. There's also something really powerful about having a house that doesn't require every three month, every six month deliveries of propane to be a fully self-sustaining house where, you know, and I'm not a doomsday prepper. I know I'm an off-grid solar guy and a lot of my customers are that way, but I, I think a one month interruption is reasonable. I think a six month interruption is extremely unlikely, but if it ever were to happen to be able to make sure that your house was able to run without needing a delivery of propane, I think it's sort of like the pinnacle of efficient off-grid home design. And it's it's more costly. It doesn't always make sense. But in the cases where you can make it work, it's a much more coherent system. So that's why we love geothermal. That's why it hasn't worked recently because of the advancements um, in energy efficiency and the efficiency of other comparable technologies. And I think we're going to see geothermal catch up, especially for off-grid homes. So thank you for tuning in to Battery Builds Episode 4 where we build homes that run on batteries. Thanks.